Okay, for a while I've been meaning to make a video on uh, getting an antique hatchet or any kind of hatchet and use it for carving. Um, it's got a buddy who got one, uh, it's come to him in the mail. Um, and so I just wanted to get this out there on uh, really basics of what you need to look for and then what you need to do to the hatchet to make it um, carve properly. We're not splitting wood here, so we're not going to use a regular kind of uh, the shape and uh, grinding that an axe does. All right, let's take a look at some of these. Okay, so. This is the S-Twing. Okay, they work, they're functional. You have to grind it a little bit. All right, and then there's some that are too small. These roofing hatchets are what I really used a lot of, uh, especially this one. This is my first one uh, that came from a sale to plum. Still had the handle. In it. See, most of these have their original handle. Um, I think this one I had to redo. And uh, this is just a little silly thing. It turns out you can't really use it. I think it's for salesmen. So. The roofing hatchets are really good because they're really thin, okay? You see that there? I have another one, I don't know where it is. Um, it got, the handle broke off, but um, it was a little bit thicker. But these plums that look like this are pretty good as long as they're, um, they look like this or they're the older one. The older ones will have a, a head like this, or it's shaped like this. And um, mostly they're just really thin, okay? Because the idea, when you're carving, you're coming from this side, all right? We're not splitting the wood, but we're coming straight down at it. So, to get it to bite into it, all right, there has to be no shoulder here, right? Like, on a, on a hatchet like this, this is old Collins, this is mostly for hitting, and so you could flatten it some, you could get it to bite, but it's not going to bite right here. See that? In fact, it has to go all the way out here, so you can only make hits like this. You really don't want that. You want to be able to come at it like this. Alright? Very low angle. Um, this one's a little heavier. It's a little bit older. I'm not really sure what the brand is. But it's also got nice weight behind it um, for that. I just recently got this one, which is a hewing hatchet. These are made specifically for going on the side. So they're, they're going to be completely flat on this side. Sometimes you'll find them and they'll be sharpened on this side. And in this case, you can see that it's... Um, it's going to have little, all of these axes, they're going to be old so they can have pitting in them. You can't have pitting on the edge uh, because it's going to make a crooked um, edge and it's not, it's not going to work. So you're going to have to take some of that down. You might have to put like a slight bevel on it, alright, but not much. Most of it's going to be on this side. So when you get this one or this, these kinds and they're going to have the double, uh, you're going to want to, like this one, you're going to try to flatten that as much as you can. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to be going on that side. If you're left-handed, you're going to want to have it clean on that side. These are made, they're forged, you can see that it goes down, and it's actually for side cutting. This isn't going to be real great for splitting wood. It will do it, but it's mainly for coming at the angle. Alright, so what you're basically going to do is get one of these. You can get these for pretty cheap uh, from Harbor, Harbor Freight or something. You should be able to get one for $20 uh, for our needs. They're totally good. And you get one of these sanding things. Um, these will come off. Okay, it's a little thing that goes on there. And there's different sizes of them. You have to make sure that the inner circle fits your hole there. Okay, and it actually warps the, the wood a little bit. You're basically going to do this and Bends this way, right? So we don't want to hit this side, or the edge is going to go in there. So we're going to go, we're going to do this, and we don't want to hit this too much, okay? So we're going to be doing this, and then when we go over to the other side, we're going to be doing this, okay? And again, on the bevel, since I'm right handed, I want this to be as flat as I can, and I want this to come over more, like this, okay? going to flatten that out. I can always feel this is getting a little bit warm and you don't want it to get too hot to ruin the heat temperature, the heat uh, treatment on it. And um, you'll, if you just keep feeling it, uh, you'll you'll notice that. And uh, you don't want it to be too hot to the touch. Keep some water nearby and make sure to dry it off afterwards so it doesn't rust. Uh, something larger like this, you know, um, 
it's going to be a little bit hard. So you can go to the other side as long as it's spinning this way. Because it's much harder to be doing this, all right? And uh, if you, again, if you catch it or something, it'll spin off. So if you can stabilize it somehow, some people build a rig. You have these screws here where you can attach it to something if you feel so inclined. get that all trimmed out and uh, then you will do a little bit of work after that but that'll be about it so when you get a new hatchet um, you're gonna have to probably spend a lot of time on it uh, you want to do a little bit of wire wheel to get most of the rust off if you like um, one of the issues with some of these uh, this is something like this where um, you know the handle it's gonna be really hard to make one just kind of skip that. Uh, these do work again. You have to spend some time on it. So you want to spend some time though. Um, besides getting a little bit clean, and again, all that really matters is this bevel. You don't have to worry about all this stuff. You want to take all that away. Uh, it's really just getting it flat, as close to flat on one side as you can, and then dealing with the rest. So keep watching the heat, and um, you know, slowly get that that shoulder, which is the uh, where the bevel starts right here. This is called the shoulder right here, okay? And that's what's gonna be hitting, if I was going this way, right? It'd be hitting it and it'd be dinging off and it wouldn't bite in, okay? So that shoulder is what you really wanna take down. Even if you can't get the whole thing completely flat, take the shoulder off as much as you can on the side that's gonna be your inside. It takes a little bit of practice to get okay with this, but it's actually because it spins so fast, it's a lot easier than other things. Um, I, I wouldn't attempt a lot of this stuff with a bench grinder. Um, it's gonna it's gonna rattle, it's gonna go all over the place, and it's it's just gonna be hard to do. Uh, there is another option if you just don't want to go to estate sales or find one on eBay or whatever. Um, you can go to uh, I get this one. Um, This one is from, I'll leave the, the link, it's from uh, Mapsist. Uh, he's like a Bulgarian, Hungarian guy, and uh, they'll sell these for pretty cheap. This is a, you know, it's a lower grade steel, but um, it is usable. Um, you know, you can, it's the same with the S-Wings. Um, a lot of these new hatchets, they'll say high carbon, but um, technically you can say high carbon steel, and it's really not tool steel, the kind that we want. That's what's so great about these old ones, is that tool steel used to be very cheap back in the day. And um, on some of these, they're going to be solid steel, and you'll generally know because um, it'll have a different look. Um, but on a lot of them, they'll, like, I think, I believe this one, you can see this line here. I'm not sure if you can see that. But that's where the steel starts because they do the old school uh, method of, of using iron over here or a mild steel, and then they'll put a wedge of, of uh, high carbon steel in there. And so that's what you need. So when you look, you can see old ones and they're down to here. They may not have much steel left. So you want to watch that. You want to have a lot of extra space. Because the other, the other thing is, okay, as far as safety goes, and first of all, you do want to uh, be very careful with these. Uh, we were not sharp because with a regular knife, let me see if I have one. <laughs> a regular knife can be out on the table, right? And I can brush my hand on it, I can go like this, and I'm okay. If that happens with an axe, it's not going to move, and you're, you're going to get cut very easily, okay? So you want to watch that. As far as the safety goes, um, you know, you don't want to ever have your hands, your fingers, like this. Is that high enough for that? You never want to have your, your hands in the way. So when you're working on stuff, you're going to get your knuckles like this. And then when you raise it up, you don't want to go higher than where your hand is. And if it is, you want to go out and then in. Okay? So the length of this makes a huge difference. This has a longer length on it, so it's much easier. And because of the weight, you don't have to put a lot of whatever into it. I can raise it to here and not have to worry about hitting my hand. I can be very close to it. All right? So you really want to watch where the height of that is with your hand, all right? How that, that works right there. Because when you're working on a spoon, which is going to be a lot smaller, you're going to be working on a piece maybe like this or something, you know, you really want to watch it and we're coming up here. And I'll go into...
carving with a hatchet a little bit in another video um, and you can watch my spoon carving videos where I use a lot of uh, hatchet work and um, just be very careful with all of this stuff um, you can screw up with a carving knife for the most part and survive or not be uh, mortally injured but you can really take off one of your fingers uh, or worse with one of these um, the last thing on the handles I was talking about most of these have their original handle and I'll do whatever it takes to uh, keep that handle uh, because it is so hard to um, to get a handle fit properly you don't want to just buy one um, off the net you know something like this is going to take a very large piece that goes in there okay and as long as it's stable you're good you know because you're, you're not swinging a lot it shouldn't be flying off and injuring anybody see how far away that is the other thing is is when you do this and it gets stuck, you're gonna do out like this, okay? You're gonna watch here where it falls. Or if you miss it, you're gonna hit your leg. So I'm generally gonna be sitting down like this. And if you want, you can go side center and go like this to have it even safer. And you wanna have a heavy wood block um, because the impacts, uh, this, is, this has a huge part to do with your physics of, of how hard of a hit you're gonna get because uh, it's going to be slipping out of there. Now, generally, um, you can only hit down, right, uh, to have a good impact. And if it's to the side, it's going to do this, right? So there's kind of these, uh, for each kind of strike, there's these um, special kind of angles. takes a while to find this angle of where it is and where you're striking all right so but when it's smaller say you're hitting up here and it gets stuck it'll pull this up and it'll move your hand out of the way and you will already have the shot in and so that's when you can hurt yourself that's why when you do a lot of stuff you make sure that you pry it out like that so that it doesn't pull up all right There's a few grips that you can do. You're almost always going to be up here with these. You don't want to be far back with it because you're not going to have any kind of control. You can do this kind of stuff, but you have to watch out for splinters going underneath your fingernails. So, you know, kind of do this kind of thing. Very low, kind of rotating it, not coming down like this too much. All right? That's why when you buy the really nice ones, they'll be uh, rounded and have a very long edge, so it will help slice with that. Um, so if you don't want to get a used hatchet, your only options are going to be, you know, spending a few hundred dollars. So getting one of these at an estate sale, uh, that's just why it's such a good, good deal. And, um, you know, there's the, uh, there's some Swiss S. I guess it's a Swiss made by file. They make some hatchets. I think they're really large though. So, um, you know, there's like, I think the Wetterlings and there's, um, I think the best company is probably going to be, um, what is this Swedish people? Um, Grunsford Brooks, all right? And, um, and they have a carving hatchet. Uh, and it might be, you know, shaped like whatever. I've done that on one of the handles, but you really want to try to keep the original. You might want to have side grain so that it won't stick into it. But you know, uh, you can look into um, barn 
a spoon has a lot of good uh, hatchet stuff and he talks about uh, some of these posts that you can make that are sideways and also check out Robin Wood I'll leave some links uh, for that stuff okay see this is dangerous what I just did right here because it pulls it up and if you have your next one in the pocket it's gonna go like this and it's gonna come down bad right your hands gonna be who knows where so you really want to pry it out So this one's pretty heavy and I maybe wouldn't suggest it for beginners, but I'm really happy that I got it. Um, there are smaller ones um, that aren't going to be as large as this, they're maybe going to be like this large. Maybe look a little bit kind of in between the two of these, uh, but these are great, great weight and everything to start with, so I really suggest that. Alright. Okay, just real quickly here, I want to talk about um, making your sheath for these. And you kind of model them after like what the S-wings are. You can do this if you want. Um, this didn't really work out the first time because the blade cut through this, right? So it's going to go through there. So depending on the shape of your hatchet, um, that's really going to depend. You know, you want somehow for there to go in there. You use these rivets so it won't cut through it. And um, like the S-wing, they do rivets and the thread. And then you're gonna wanna, you know, strap it on there somehow. This one's a little bit loose. It could have some other stuff, but it's good to have it on there. I have no idea how I'm gonna make one for this. I'm gonna have to use a whole cow to make it. I mean, it's gonna be like this large. It's gonna be ridiculous, but uh, I'll eventually do that. So, I think that's it there. And uh, good luck. Okay, so now that you're, uh, you've done your angle grinding, you've got it mostly to shape. Um, and with the angle grinder, you know, you can get different grits of the sandpaper that's on there. Uh, don't get too rough of a grit, um, like where it looks like it's rocks glued to paper. Uh, you know, get something in between and maybe try to see if they have like a finer one. And when you work with the finer grits, they're going to fill up and then they become even finer. So you may be able to get pretty uh, close to done on your edge with those. And you want to follow all the normal steps of sharpening. Uh, I have a sharpening video which goes over the basics of it. You know, you want to get down to where there's a point there and maybe even a burr on the edge, uh, you know, if, if you really go for it. Uh, and then, so, to get that burr off, uh, you do want to sharpen these pretty good. You know, you want to treat it like a knife. Uh, hopefully get a pretty good mirror polish on there. Um, so, basically what you'll do after you get it shaped correctly is you're going to come to... Um, you know, using some other some other tools. Today we're going to be using uh, some DMT products. These are the diamond uh, products uh, that I really really like. Um, they they go very fast. Um, they remove material fast, and um, they're really the best technology since water stones. And, and they're they're probably better the Japanese water stones. Um, so there's really nothing comparable. And because of the, you can get these smaller sizes. They're going to be a little bit cheaper, but they're also um, maybe it's more convenient sometimes uh, for stuff like this and it is going to be a little bit hard These are some of the larger stones Okay, and it's maybe like these are a little bit heavy. It's definitely doable But you know having on there doing this kind of deal. So what you might want to do is Set it on something and then get your we're gonna start you know depending on how polished it looks how much work You need to do is where, what grit you're gonna start with and you know you're just gonna kind of be doing this kind of thing and try to make sure that you're on the, the proper angle. You don't want to take your edge off uh, that you've worked on so hard. Um, so, you know, you want to get that real steady. And then, I, 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 on numerous occasions, I've cut myself doing this stuff specifically because your hand is very close. And again, like we talked about earlier, this thing's not going to move out of the way. You're going to run your hand along, it's going to be razor sharp, and it's going to really cut more than a knife will. Okay, so, um, you know, you're going to be doing this kind of thing. And if there's a burr on there, which, you know, there should be, you're, you know, maybe you feel for it. Uh, you'll know when you hit the edge uh, because you'll, you'll be able to feel that it's gone to the other side. Um, you know, and again, on the other side, you're going to do the same kind of thing. You know, it's kind of doing this. And this is the old school way that the American guys would do it um, with files. Okay, so 
that can work. Um, and then, let's see, what else here? Okay, so there's kind of these different sizes of the smaller ones. This one actually comes as a butterfly. Uh, this is one of the double-sided ones, really good value. Um, and this is going to be the fine and the extra fine. If you're going to spend the money, get two of these. And you get the, the blue and the red and then the green and the tan, which is this one. Um, but I ended up getting them in different orders, so that's just what happened. Um, but the, it gets covered with the thing. This is broken now because I've just used the, the hell out of it. I really love these tools. So, um, And, you know, it's not like it's the end of the world that that has fallen off because these don't have one anyway. Um, you can always epoxy these to a piece of wood if you feel like it's necessary. Um, but it's usually not. If you need to, you can uh, put it on the back with some leather and it won't move around so much or you can use uh, some sort of piece of rubber uh, matting that will hold it. You know, this is a little bit uh, weird, but that would work. Um, you know, the non-slip kind of mats. So anyway, you've got, you've got, these are the credit card size ones and um, this is going to be, I don't know, whatever size that is. And then there's also these little flip ones, um, which are pretty convenient. You just carry around your keychain. Um, and these are good enough, you know, it's, uh, it's enough size, and it gives you a little handle and whatnot. Um, yeah, pop that one back in there. I take them out sometimes because of, uh, it's just easier to use them sometimes without it, so. Anyway, again, I would go for these if you're on a budget, and uh, just in general. Um, and then these ones are really good for traveling, obviously, you can put them in your wallet. Um, but with really small gouges and tools... Uh, these the hole ones aren't going to work. They're going to go inside the holes. So I'm getting into other sharpening stuff here. I'm going to shut up. So that's how you do that with all of these. You kind of go, you know, on here. And if you didn't feel safe, you can lay it down. Absolutely. And then if there's hair here. It's gross. You lay it down on there. And then go after it. And with the diamonds, you really don't have to press hard, and it will uh, start doing that, do the work for you. So then if you have a larger stone, uh, you're going to go for something like this. This is also the DMT stone. This is going to be an inter uninterrupted one. I went ahead and got these uh, because, just because I have so many other tools that, you know, the V-tools and stuff, they go into these holes. You can do it with these, but it's just, it's not as easy. So um, I went ahead with these. Um, I don't know. I'm really happy that I got them. These are very heavy, uh, so you don't have to really do anything with them. And so if you were going to do that, you can you kind of have the options as I teach in most whatevers. You know, people teach certain ways, um, but you can do the up and down. You can do towards you. If you feel like it, you can go away from you. It's whatever you can get it the most stable with, all right? That's the whole thing. Because if you're rolling it at all, you're taking your edge off, and that's going to make it, however pretty this is, on a macro level, if that tip is blunt, it's not gonna, you know, you're not gonna have a sharp tool. And actually, is that a line there? I think you can see, can you guys see it on this one? Let me see here. Yeah, oh, look at that. Okay, see right there? See that line that's coming out right here? That's where the steel's gonna start on this one specifically. You can see they fold it in there and there's like these, uh, corroded a little bit underneath there and I know you couldn't see that outside so I'll show it to you on this one I'm not sure if it's polished enough yeah it's got too much crap on it I think no there we go yeah, you can see it that line right there all right so anyway so if you're gonna go with one of these um, it may be that you're maybe that the edge is not f like flat or it's not even a good curve like this one's a little bit flat it goes rounded it was ever um, and you may want to fix that when you're on the angle grinder. Try to get a nice consistent curve, it'll make it easier for you when you go to other tools. Um, and a curve is okay, by the way. If you lose your tips on these, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Again, the, a lot of the carving hatchets come curved, so uh, you can totally do that. I definitely use the tips of these sometimes, though, to get into to stuff. Alright, so, you know, again, depending on the shape and whatnot, you know, if you want to work, like, this one's very large, you want to work on a small area, you know, very, very steadily. I'm not doing this steadily, that's why I go up and down. You just kind of do this, and you can see underneath there where the shadow disappears, and that's when you're on the edge, okay? And it's going to be a little bit harder to see from some angles, you know, where it is, like how... That's about the angle I got on this one, is right there, on that other side. It's about as flat as I can get it right now because it had that corrosion on it. Okay, so 
again, you'll just go through the grits. What is this? The extra fine? This is fine. Okay. So it's like a 600 grit. I just got these. They're freaking awesome. Alright. And again, I mean, this is not as fast. So if you can do the kind where you, you know, do this sweep, then go ahead and do that. But at the end of the day, it's whatever you can do the most steady without rolling it. Alright. And then you're going to go to the other side. So, really whatever you feel comfortable with, you know, if you feel like you want to do it on the table, or you want to pick this up and get this set somewhere, and you want to roll it across there, whatever you want to do, alright? And you're going to get that burr down, you're going to get it nice and polished, and then I, I strop them, you know? Um, there's a few stropping compounds I'd suggest, there's the Deep Woods Ventures, um, this is a DMT one. And um, this stuff, I, I've already kind of loaded up this thing, but um, this will last pretty good. Comes in a little syringe there, which is kind of sketchy, You're shooting up that DMT stuff. Alright, and then you can smear it around with your finger if you want, get a little bit of coverage. But if it's kind of, you do this S shape or whatever, I'm just using this side of it. Um, and not this side, because I'll leave that blank there for the other side. But you need to let your tool rub it in. And... You're gonna you're gonna want to rub it in for a little bit before it's, it really becomes uh, like you're stropping because uh, it's a little overloaded at first. And don't press it too hard. So this gets a little awkward with you know the with the handle basically. It, it really does. And uh, I'm filming right now, so this isn't the best whatever. Um, generally, if you have this on a piece of wood or you would lift it up. It's going to be a lot easier to deal with all this stuff. And again, so on the stropping, you have to go away from the edge. Okay. And really get that polished stuff good. Let's see if I can get this in here. Um, if you don't have leather, decent leather, you can use cardboard to strop. Um, you use um, the inside of a cereal box. Um, or, or beer beer can box. Uh, this is like you know pop tarts. Uh, not endorsing pop tarts for sure. Um, and you just put your stuff on there, and then you go after that. And this this is um, it's very compact, so it won't um, you know if you use this kind of cardboard, it's going to go in, and you don't want that. So you can put this on something, and um, it works really great. It's a it's a really great cheap strop. It's not going to last very long, but you know you probably have an endless supply of these. So there's that, and. Let's see here. So yeah. Um, all right. That's all I really want to talk about on that. Um, again, watch the sharpening video. See how much time it really takes to go through these grits. Cause I'm not going to do it right now. Um, but I do want to talk about the shoulders again. So give me a second here. All right. So the profile of the blade, right? Looking at it this way. All right. That's what we're going to be talking about. So on this one, it's going to have a bevel on both sides. And as we... Whoops, I want to split my diamond box. Uh, on this one, let's see if you can see that in here. Okay. You can see it's on one side, see that? I'm going to draw it out larger. And then again, you can see that this is very much, uh, the whole thing is goes in on this side and it's completely flat on this side. Okay, so let's talk about that shoulder, because this is, again, what you're, you're thinking about, what you want to do. A regular axe, all right, the edge, the profile of it is going to be like this. It's, it's going to be wide, but it's also going to be rounded some, okay? And that's because, specifically, these are made for blunt force. It's for, you know, splitting wood straight from the top, all right? There's your piece of wood there. And that's what you use those for. If you try to do this on, you have your wood and you're trying to make a spoon or whatever, um, it's going to do this, all right? That, this roundness is going to make it bounce off. This is only for straight on cutting. So it's, you know, this isn't going to catch until it's like right here. And that, you can't, you're not going to do any carving like that at all. So what you want to do to get past that is make this flat, okay? So most of these aren't, they maybe won't have this super rounded thing because they're hatchets to begin with. You know, they're going to be something like this. Maybe they're flat, maybe they're not, maybe there's been time. <clears throat> okay, so here's the actual bevel. This is going to be the rest of it. Alright, so this right here is your bevel right there, and up here is the rest of it. 
and there's going to be, generally, there's going to be a pretty harsh uh, angle right here. And this is what we call the shoulder, all right? So in this, again, if you're going against some wood, that's what's going to make, you know, that's going to determine the angle at which you can come at your wood. And we want to come at it as close as we can uh, to it. So what you'll try to do on your inside, for me I'm right handed, so it'll be the inside, it was right here, that we want to make flat. We want to take that shoulder off as much as we can, okay? And so you'll basically, even if you just take this off to here, you don't even redefine this actual bevel. If you just take that off or round it or whatever, remove some of that steel, that gives it a little bit more. Because basically it, it, this is going to be the same angle that you attack the wood, but only this is going to make contact. It's going to bite in better without this hitting. Because if there's too much of this surface area, it's going to be bouncing off easier, okay, instead of biting in. So what you really, really want to get to, let's see if I can get some more paper here, is you want to get, you know, this kind of profile as close as you can to this so that it can bite in at a very, very steep angle, okay? And so that's not going to be possible on a lot of these, again. So you get as close as you can. We'll say if this is the center right here, so we still see that? Yeah. This is the center of it, all right? And then here's your outside of it. And you still have a bevel there. Here, actually, I'll just draw it and I'll use a different color. That's the inside of it. Try to, try to get it in as much as you can, all right? And that's, that's really what's going to make the difference. Um, so when you're working on it in the first place, you, you want to really bring in that side as much as you can. And these might be, again, because of the corrosion, um, that you're going to have to bring in the edge a little bit, you know, maybe like a millimeter or so, maybe more depending on how much rust and corrosion it had. Because it's going to look like the edge up close is going to look like this because of the pitting, right? And it's, even if some of it's sharp, this, this is what it's going to look like. Oh, can we see that? No, we can't see that. Alright. Uh, this is what it's going to look like at a macro level, okay? That's what those little pitting is going to happen. And you're not going to be able to sharpen that. It's going to be a flat spot. So, that, you know, when that, this one doesn't have any. Again, when you have this kind of stuff over on the edge, which you should, the edge is going to be the what gets rusted out first because it's the thinnest and everything. That's what's going to be wrong with the hatchet when you first get it and why it's maybe not going to have a really clean strike. And so you really need to bring it down so that you don't see any of these little dots on the edge. Okay? Um, you can see over here where I've made it more flat that this extends even farther because, uh, again, I was working on it to make it more flat over time. And you can see that actually, let me see here, yeah, you see that reflection right here? That's the actual bevel on there, and again, I just, this was the shoulder, and so I took all of that off. And that makes a huge difference when I'm going in to attack uh, the wood from the side, um, but that none of this is there, so that it can get a pretty, pretty steep angle, alright? So I think that's about all I can say. Um, just another thing on safety, we were talking about, um, you know, keeping your hands and knuckles free, and uh, also the way that the weight of it, that it doesn't move, and then there's also, you know, you can't drop these things. You can't drop them on your feet, you can't drop them anywhere, all right? Even when you set them in your apartment, in wherever you live, you want to make sure that this is protected and not somewhere. You can walk into this thing, do any of that, it's going to be a mess. You know, you can be cavalier with a carving knife or, or tools. You can get da you know damaged pretty bad. I've had three emergency room visits. I don't want to have one with an axe, and I don't want any of you guys to have one. So, don't go off of what you see or hear from me. Yeah, you know, I want every time you go and try to think about a cut, think about what's going to happen. Go through it slowly first. Think about the path of the axe and the way that you're hitting it. What is behind it? If the wood gives out, is your body part behind it in the, the pathway of the axe? And then also you're going to give yourself a plus or minus of error. Because at first, and even now for me, there's still error. There's plus or minus of how much error. And you don't. You want to give yourself leeway in that for striking. And, and as far as flesh being in the way of that. And or other people or creatures. So... 
Uh, just be safe with these things. And if you guys have any questions, ask me in the comments. Um, if you're looking for a hatchet and you want to talk about one on eBay or something, uh, hit me up. And uh, as far as handling goes, again, um, you're going to have to probably just buy the, the hickory ones. You can get it at a sale. Um, not a sale. Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever these crap places are. Um, you need to get the big one because all these have funny shapes. And a regular hatchet one that you get offline, it's maybe even if it's old, it may not fit in there right. So you have to shape down a proper one. And um, it's a bit of a pain. But, you know, there's videos online. A lot of strong opinions. And there's a lot of uh, BS that's not backed up. But, um, you know, don't... Do not coat your handles with boiled linseed oil. Uh, if you put too much boiled linseed oil on something, it won't dry. It becomes a sticky mess, and it's a fire hazard. You can put a little bit in the top if you want to have it expand and keep it expanded, but I would go easy with that stuff. A lot of people talk real hard about that, and not any of these guys are lumberjacks, and they have very little experience with their actual hatchets. So, um, you know... Take take uh, the information from multiple places. Don't swear by anything, and and, and try it out some. Um, and again, you know, if uh, some people are against the safety wedges, um, you know, if that's what it takes to get your old handle to be solid, do it. It um, I've never had a problem with them, but again, you know, it's opinion, and um, everybody has one.